It's 2023 and why are people playing Halo Infinite again? Because when you look at the Steam charts for June and July, the population has been going up. But wasn't this game officially considered dead by the gaming community since launch? When you have some of the biggest names in Twitch streaming your game and major content creators making multiple videos on the game itself, people are gonna start paying attention and the reason why, it's a fun ass game. As someone who has stuck with Halo Infinite since the launch of the game, I see five main reasons why people are coming back Back to this game now. So if you like this type of videos, make sure you tap that like button, helps out the video and channel, subscribe for some more Halo content, and let's get right into those details. The first reason why people are coming back to Halo is because it has content now. One aspect of that new content are the maps are in this game. Halo Infinite launched with 10 maps, which isn't anything crazy to praise, but a solid group of maps. But that's basically all we had for an entire year. We did see the additions of Catalyst and Breaker, but that's two maps. So for the first year of support, we had 12 maps to play around in Halo Infinite. That's not a lot, but with Forge being added into Halo Infinite back in late of 2022, that total of maps have ballooned up to 42 now in the game. Having a good map pool is crucial for a first person shooter success just because you don't want it to feel so mundane and boring, especially with some of the playlists within Halo Infinite that they really actually shrunk down that small map pool already. Halo Infinite's most popular mode, Ranked Arena, probably had like what, six maps in rotation at some point? Like that's pretty mundane. That gets really repetitive really fast. Big Team Battle one of the most popular modes ever in Halo had three maps for the longest of time until they added in Breaker, so you had four maps in total. Still four right now, so it's still rather repetitive. Though, according to Michael Shore, one of the leads over at 343 does state here that the community BTB playlist is currently in the works right now, so we could expect this as soon as Season 5. A major point of improvement when it comes to the content within Halo Infinite are the modes you can play, because if you guys remember at launch, it was a uh, a little slim. So slim that we only had the quick play, bot boot camp, big team battle, and ranked arena to play. No team slayer or anything else. But right now in Halo Infinite, you have all of these. You can't even fit them on the one screen. You have to scroll down to find all the playlists, which is great. But the modes that got people really excited about playing Halo Infinite are one, Infection coming back within season four, fan favorite mode that's been played since Halo 2, and also Squad Battles, which brought back basically classic big team battle, which I think a lot of people are trying to favor a bit more than the large scale BTB that's in the game right now. You have news outlets like Kotaku writing positive articles saying Halo Infinite is back and praising the Squad Battle mode and saying how great it is to play again. And with having a good mix of modes that are like right here, we have Dredge 24-7, which is the new map that was just added in a few weeks ago in the Halo Infinite, which is the countdown remake, which people are really enjoying. We have a good mix of permanent playlists and rotational playlists coming into the game, making people just want to hop in and, and play. Like right now we have ranked Tactical Slayer coming in, which is going to be here for the next month so people can jump in, grind out, and haven't had a chance to play ranked SWAT well ever in Halo Infinite until now. And the current leaks are saying that Husker Aid might be coming in at the end of August, which is a fan favorite mode. And more leaks suggesting that Firefight could be coming in Halo Infinite very soon as most likely season five. A lot of content and experiences people want to have with Halo should be coming around here pretty soon, making people excited to jump back in and play the game. The second point on this list is that the customization has been greatly improved. There still is work to be done, but it definitely has improved since launch. One major thing, since the release of season four that cross core codings are actually a thing now all new codings that are coming into this game now are going to be available for all your cores to play around with for example here in the shop if you scroll all the way to the right you can get a free coding called the arbiter's guard and this is going to be available for every core coding in the game so you can just jump in and grab it for free by the way and also just add it to your character and there are so many more codings like this that give players the freedom to customize their Spartan to express themselves how they like, how you've been able to do previously in other Halo games. We've seen overall customization improvements when it comes to the cores and the armor sets available. For example, we had Tenrai 2 come back here recently to fill out some more of the customization for your Royal Warrior core, which has been kind of light. Another event for your Hazmat core, which came within Season 4 to give yourself some more customization to get for free. You recently had Cyber Showdown 2 come to Halo Infinite, which gave you some new codings, some really cool customization to play on a little bit of the nostalgia, some extra armor pieces as well, some new weapon models, which is something that's been it's very missed right now when it comes to customization within Halo Infinite and also just like a really fun stance that plays in with like the meme culture of Halo right now so there's a lot of stuff you can get for free you can customize how you like and really feel like you're expressing yourself 
how you used to be able to in the classic Halo games to a certain extent, obviously. I don't know if you guys remember the first 10 right event that we had that you're basically just kind of unlocking challenge swaps and XP boosts and a little bit of content here and there with some more emblems, like nothing really interesting at all. But this type of content that we have just for the Cyber Showdown is pretty standard when it comes to most events within the game and also for the fracture events that are returning within Halo Infinite. Because when I saw this battle rifle model that you can unlock by just playing the game and you can get these up pretty easily within the challenge system which we'll touch on a little bit later as well that I was like yeah I definitely want to unlock this. I know a lot of people out there still want to see the primary secondary color options return for you to pick out for just for yourself, but it looks like they're sticking with this coding system for the near term. Though I would expect to see more customization available when it comes to Halo Infinite as the shop right here is basically is what's keeping the lights on when it comes to Halo Infinite's development. So you know they're gonna be pushing more customization, giving players more options, whatever adds more value to what you're paying for within this game they're going to develop better things for the players. Number three on the list here, each item isn't really something that brings people back, right? It gets people excited about playing the game, but they make huge differences from the gameplay experience to where you just feel like, hey, this game is actually playing how it should. Because the quality of life and stability improvements that have happened with Halo Infinite over the past year and a half have been substantial. For example, here's a clip of me playing a few months ago, and you can see how I'm just jumping around like crazy having an insane packet loss happen, which my internet service is strong, it's consistent. This is definitely the game. I don't have this issue with anything else. And you can see I'm getting shot around corners, teleporting around. It was just not a good experience. And I can say for the most part now that it's actually fun to play. When you're shooting, things land. You're not teleporting around as much or doing anything crazy. Most of the time now, if I see any kind of issues, I'm like, okay, what's wrong with my internet rather than what's wrong with the game? Deaths of getting shot around the corner are not nearly as bad as they once were. Not saying it's completely removed, but now it's more of an issue, just lag compensation that every major shooter has nowadays. I haven't experienced any egregious shot around corners action in a very long time. Ever since 343 updated the networking, the focus more on people playing in their region to play together has reduced the lag compensation shot around corners issue a lot. Cheating within Halo Infinite used to be a major issue. You'd see it so many times within the first year of the game's launch. It'd be a new clip going around either on Reddit or on Twitter of showcasing someone just doing some crazy cheating that would just completely ruin the experience of the game. I'm not saying that cheating has been completely removed from Halo Infinite or I would say any shooter out there really. You'll always find a cheater somewhere because that will happen. But I haven't experienced it in the longest time right now. And I would say that at the moment that I would never really expect to play against a cheater unless you're just, you know, coming across people like 2000 plus CSR in ranked mode. That's where you might see cheaters out there. But for the most part, like you're not really playing against cheaters. I'm, I rarely see them nowadays. Before 3 made mouse and keyboard a viable option now within the game. Before it was just controller only. If you're playing on mouse and keyboard, you're playing at a pure disadvantage. But now that's not the case anymore. Mouse and keyboard player Summit 1G talked about this. Infinite's buttery smooth for PC players. And now that we can keep up with controller players a little bit better, you guys are gonna like it, dude. If you played Reach and you were disappointed in that, let me tell you, to win gunfights in Reach against controller players was absolutely impossible. Impossible. But they have closed that gap immensely in, in, in Infinite. Trust, dude. Desync is still a bit of an issue with Halo Infinite, though 343 understands what causes desync for the most part at this point, and they found ways to work around it, especially with a lot of the Forge maps that they've added into the game. And I don't really expect to see this desync issue fully go away. I think it'd be something that will be reduced, they'll work around it, but I think it's just kind of something that's stuck with the engine. But from my experience, it's definitely lessened a lot as well, where I've only had, had it like a couple of times happen. That's over hundreds and hundreds of hours of playing the game, so it's a rather rare experience. One of Halo Infinite's most popular modes, BTB, had a big issue of uneven vehicle draws with the Pelicans, where basically sometimes one team would get a tank, the other team gets a mongoose. Not exactly the most fair, fun experience to have. Well, they recently updated the game now to where you can actually have the same vehicle drop at the same time as well. So then when you're playing big team battle, it's a fair, balanced experience. And once these pelican cops came in, okay, here we go. We got a rocket hog coming in. Dude, they got a rocket hog too. Look at that. Okay. 
things are looking balanced. Big Four Three recently added in career ranks. So when you're playing the game, you're ranking up, making progression in some way. So it's not all just stuck to the battle pass. And the challenge system with Halo of it has been greatly improved where it's not some tedious little specific thing you have to go out and do. They're pretty generic now where it's like, get five kills with a assault rifle, battle rifle, sidekick, something like that get a kill with a shock rifle. These things just kind of happen by just playing the game. So you're not stuck playing some specific mode, trying to accomplish some specific task. I'm sure a lot of people have PTSD of and a killing spree in Super Fiesta back in the day, which that was just such a weird specific thing that was actually really rather rare to do. And if you don't like the challenge, you can just swap it out. And sw challenge swaps are rather common for unlocks as well if, while, while you progress through the battle pass. And the challenge system is also just like a nice additional bonus thing. There are still progressive elements tied to it. Like when you're playing through an event, say like the Cyber Showdown event that's recently going on, you do have to complete challenges to progress through the event battle pass. And completing challenges does help your progression f go through faster within the regular premium battle pass. But your main progression of how you're gonna be making your way through that is just by just playing the game, getting points, getting XP for playing the matches, whatever you like, however you like to play. Which giving players that sense of freedom, that quality of life improvement of just being able to play the game how they want and make progression. Well, that's a great thing because when the game first launched, it definitely was that, but it is now. Number four on this list here, the live service is actually alive. I'm sure many Halo players get PTSD when looking at this roadmap when they first saw that season three was going to be delayed until March, making season two 10 months long. That was completely unacceptable and 343 agrees with it. But now seasons are lasting as long as they were promised before launch, about three to four months long. And not only that, there's updates that happen between the seasonal updates right here. As we see recently with August 9th, that we had a mid-season update, which actually brought one, a whole new map into the game, which was a remake of Countdown from Halo Reach, a fan favorite now in the game you can play at the moment. Death cam updates where you can now rotate your camera. Again, a quality of life improvement right here. So then you can have that legacy feature come back into Halo so you can help out and play Halo Infinite better. So basically things are happening with the game. New maps come in, new modes come in and out. They rotate in and out. You have permanent, you have rotational. It's a great mix right now. You have your seasonal event that returns every few weeks. And then you also have your one-off events like right now with the Cyber Showdown. It just seems like every week or every other week, there's something happening within Halo to make you want to jump in and and play the game. And it seems like there are more things on the way. One being campaign AI in Forge, which is currently being worked on by 343 and that rumored to be coming around within season five. And this recent leak showcasing that Firefight is currently in the works and can be found within the API and likely to come into Halo Infinite very soon, as well as more maps coming in for big team battle. It just feels like there's content. There's things happening within the game that make you want to jump in and play, which is exactly the idea of a live service game. It's actually alive now. And this is what I've been saying about Halo for so long that I feel like the sentiment of Halo will be improving as we actually get into the seasonal rotation. We just finally experienced a true season with season three from March until June. Currently in season four, we'll have season five come around in a couple months with some new maps and content modes and things to do within the game. It's alive. It's things are happening. And for point number five of why people are coming back to play Halo Infinite in 2023, especially right now, is because people just want a good Halo experience. There will always be those people who will jump online and play whatever is the current new Halo experience or even the old stuff with MCC. But Halo just has a certain aspect to it that can't really be matched with very many games out there. There's such strong nostalgia and core memories tied to this franchise that it will always bring people back into it. And it seems like a lot of people have just been waiting around in the shallows, waiting to jump in and experience a true Halo game. And now it's actually starting to happen. For the longest time, Halo was just used as nostalgia bait to get you to jump in to buy into some new microtransaction within some other kind of game or just to kind of play off of the feelings because there's just such strong feelings when it comes to the Halo franchise for players. And 343 kind of leaned into that experience with the squad battles mode to get people to jump in and play these classic big team battle modes on this classic big team battle type playlist once again, and it worked. And people always agreed that the fundamentals of Halo, the core gameplay experience of Halo Infinite is actually really good. This is the most agreed upon Halo experience I've ever had within my life of playing Halo since like Halo 3. But the big thing that was holding it back was the lack of content, the lack of updates, the dead servers, if you will, that was happening with Halo Infinite. And now it's up, it's kicking, it's alive. People are jumping in, playing the experiences that they've wanted for the longest time and 
it's pretty dang fun. It feels like Halo's finally having its moment where it can actually have people jump in within the general gaming community and have fun with the game. Because everybody has their own specific way of how they enjoy Halo, and now Halo Infinite is starting to finally offer those experiences. Because there never really was one specific thing that made Halo great. It was a culmination of all these small communities that had their own particular way to play the game, which made it so fantastic, but also quite difficult to develop for. But now, Halo Infinite is starting to get to that point. And there's more stuff on the way with season five, six, seven, eight, whatever they want to keep, you know, supporting this game for. And as long as there's more updates coming for Halo Infinite, I'll be talking about them here on the channel.